Hello everyone, I'm Corey Mitchell with TradeThatSwing.com and in this video we're going to look at the best and worst months for the stock market. These are called seasonal patterns, so over history we've tended to find that certain months perform better for the stock market and other months perform worse. If you want to find this data, and it is updated each year based on the information we received in the prior year, you can go to TradeThatSwing.com stocks and at the bottom there is monthly stock performance and you can find all the latest updated information. So this is a brief summary of the best and worst months in the up months and week months. Not all of them are listed because some are kind of right on the cusp of whether they're good months or bad months, but we do have three strong contenders. So when we look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, we do have some standout performers. Uh, typically, June, August, September, June, September for the S&P 500, February and September for the NASDAQ 100. S weaker months tend to be April, July, and November, and also October for the NASDAQ. So that's the quick summary. Let's get to some actual data. These are all, you can find these on stockcharts.com. I believe TrendSpider also has uh, seasonal charts you can look at. And so this is the NYSE Composite. It is a very broad based index, including all the stocks listed on the NYSE. So stocks from all different industries, different sizes, a very kind of comprehensive measure, I guess, of what the typical stock would be. And we can see best months, April, July, October, November, December, worst months, January, February, June, August, September. Anytime we're dealing with seasonality, it's important to consider that this is historical data. It does not necessarily indicate what will happen this year. As we look at these statistics, the number at the top of the column is how many times the price finished higher than where it opened as a percentage. So 50% at the top here means that out of the last 20 years it moved up 10 times or it went up in 10 Januaries out of the last 20 Januaries. So January and February we can see fairly weak. Uh, they've only, It's basically a coin flip whether they're going to go up or not. This number at the bottom column which is point minus point 0.1 that is the average return for that month over the last 20 years. So it's not only a coin flip whether it goes up or not, but basically it's been a wash holding it those months. The price really hasn't gone up or down a whole lot. Now in individual years, it will have, right? This is the average. So in some years, January might have been down 10%, another year it might have been up 10%. But on average, it has been pretty flat through January and February and only going up about half the time. As we get into March and April, we tend to see a little bit more of a push to the upside. March, just a little bit. Average profit or the average increase over the last 20 years is 0.5%. So still pretty low and just a little bit better than a coin flip. We've moved up 11 years out of 20 for a 55% win rate, we'll call it. April, average gain 2%. So this is one of the stronger months of the year. You can see it's moved up 16 times over the last 20 years, 80%, for an average gain of 2%. May might have been uh, one bad year in there, something that brought this average down. As you can see, still a pretty high win rate in the sense that 14 years of the last 20 or 70% of the Mays have gone up over the last 20 years but slightly negative average. June, one of the worst months of the year, below 50% win rate and an average loss. July, again, one of the stronger months of the year at 75% win rate and a 1.8% average gain. August, a little bit weaker again for the NYSE Composite. We'll look at some other indexes as well. Uh, and then starts to escalate a little bit into the end of the year. So we have August, September tend to be a little bit weaker. Low win rate, typically on the losing side of 
or tending to give back a little bit of profits during those months, then October increases 60% win rate, 0.6% average gain, and November and December both at 70% win rate. 14 years out of the last 20, they've moved higher. 1.9% average gain for November, 1.2% for December. And quickly look at the last 10 years, pretty much a similar story. We have early in the year tending to be a little bit weak. Then we have these moves up in April, July also strong, tend to have this lull during August, September area, and then a little bit better performance toward the end of the year. Probably more familiar with the S&P 500, so let's quickly go through that one. Over the last uh, 20 years, we have March, April, May, July, October, November, December, all pretty good months. January, June, September tending to be a little bit weaker. January, as we can see, 50% win rate, 0.1% average gain. So again, usually the market doesn't gain much traction. 2024, a different story. January and February are both quite strong. So again, seasonality and looking at the best and worst months, it's historical data does not necessarily indicate what will happen in any given year because we're looking at averages and the average is composed of both prices moving higher and lower and the, this win rate is also going to continually change over time so over time this may increase because we do get more Januarys where the price moves up and April may decrease because we get fewer or it may even increase uh, so it's always an evolving uh, numbers and statistics but Overall, still January, February, a little bit weaker, and we continue to escalate into March and April, tending to be better months. May also fairly strong for the S&P 500, these pretty good win rates here. June, a little bit weaker, but still okay, but average, average profit is negative 0.1%. 75% win rate in July and a 2.4% average gain so we see you know july tending to be a pretty strong month across the s p and the nyc composite august september a little bit slower again 0.1 percent in august negative 0.6 percent in september and 60 percent win rate october is starting to increase a little bit still the same win rate average gain increases to one percent 2.5% in November, one of the best months of the year for the S&P 500. And December also decently strong with an uh, average gain of 1% over the last 20 years and a 70% win rate. You can check it out on the 10-year as well. And again, a similar type of structure where we see early in the year a little bit weaker, but at least the average gains are positive, escalate into the... March, April area, April pretty strong. Uh, July, once again, strong. And then we see that little bit weaker period after that strong period, August, September, a little bit weaker, and then escalating back into the end of the year. December kind of on the cusp usually. Uh, not a super strong month, but October a little bit stronger, and then November generally a strong month. If you want to visualize the data in a slightly different way, we this is basically just overlaying every year to see how it performs throughout the year so each one of these lines corresponds to a year so you can just kind of see how each year unfolded so let's go to the nasdaq best months january a little bit stronger for the nasdaq over the last 20 years whereas with the NYC Composite and the S&P, January, February, a little bit weaker. March, also decently strong. S&P and NYC Composite, that was more kind of a month where we started to see some increases. April, strong again. May, July, August, October, November, and December, all decent. Uh, you can see here, December, positive average, but just kind of above a coin flip. So again, December is kind of right on that fence of whether it's a really good month or just kind of a mediocre one. 
the worst months February, June, and September. So fairly similar to what we've seen in the other indexes. Uh, only moved up eight times out of the last 20 years. So a 40% win rate, 0.2% average gain in February. So still hanging into the positive. That's good. Uh, March, April, May, all pretty steady, producing some decent gains. 1.9% in March, April, 2% average gain, May, 1.6% average gain. June, slightly weaker, basically a coin toss and pretty much flat on average returns. July, once again, as we've seen with the under index, it seems to be a strong month. 3.5% average gain, 85% win rate. August starting to slow down just a little bit into another one of the worst months of the year tends to be September and September 50% win rate average loss of 0.4% and then we get that bit of an escalation into the end of the year especially October and November 60% win rate in October 75% in November 1.6% average gain and 2.3% in November and December as we mentioned just kind of on the cusp there of 55% win rate, 0.5% average gain. And over the last 10 years, you know, we, we basically see some similar things. July really strong, September tending to be weaker, October and November fairly strong. These kind of early in the year, middle months, March, April, May, fairly decent, a little bit weaker performance in February. And so that's basically how the market has unfolded over the last 20 years. You could definitely look at more data to paint a bigger picture. How would you use this data? Well, you want to include it in your own plan and you may decide not to use it at all and there'd be that'd be perfectly valid or you may decide to incorporate it and in. maybe if you're an investor, you wait for seasonally weak periods when you add to your long-term positions because you're generally going to be buying on a little bit of a pullback. Uh, you may also want to buy ahead of really strong periods, right? Those July months where the market tends to really move up, maybe we purchase ahead of that. Uh, in terms of swing traders, you could potentially be a little bit more active or take a month off. If you're going to take a month off, maybe take it off during those weak or really flat months. And you could go through that, you know, chart to see where, you know, things tend to be most quiet. And maybe that's, you know, when you take your vacation for the year or something like that. And then you want to be active during those months where you tend to see the really big movements. And again, we could look at study things like this uh, chart to see when we tend to have the most action in the market. So that is how the, the best and worst months for the stock market, looking at three major indexes. And yeah, happy trading out there.